A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to him saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this and then he told them, our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to, the, to him, master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death. Well, they thought he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection, the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. 
and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, the teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her went, who were with her in the house comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her, weeping as well, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had, who had come to Mary and seen what had been, had done, we had, he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise I find the story of Lazarus, an interesting one. It's one of those ones that there's a lot of meat to it, there's a lot of different things I could talk about, but probably the thing that I find the most intriguing with it is simply this. The question, for whom did Jesus raise Lazarus? For whom? Why did he raise Lazarus? Who was he raising Lazarus on behalf of? Was it for Lazarus' own sake? Was it for Martha? Was it for Mary? Was it for the Jews? Was it for his own sake? Why did Jesus raise Lazarus? For whom? The natural inclination of most people is to presume that Jesus raised Lazarus for Lazarus' own sake. But if we're people of the resurrection, if we're people who believe in the resurrection of the dead, and Lazarus, there's no, reason, there's no indication that Lazarus died in a bad state of his soul. He's already endured the suffering of death. Why bring him back? He's going, he, isn't, he isn't raised to the resurrection of eternal life. So it's not that he's going to live forever. He's going to die again. It's probably not for Lazarus that he was raised. It's probably not. Lazarus was probably fine having passed away at that point. Even to a degree, Martha and Mary are both saying, he wouldn't have died if you'd come, but we believe that he'll rise at the end. I mean, Martha and Mary even have a little bit of peace at this. 
So even Martha and Mary, he's not raising Lazarus for them. All the miracles Christ does throughout his ministry, pretty much all of them are to bring faith to others, to allow others to believe more deeply. For whom did he raise Lazarus? For the disciples? Definitely. The disciples were definitely some of the people that he raised Lazarus for. Why? He's trying to prepare them for his own death. To let them know ahead of time, I have power over death itself. When, thing, when things seem darkest, do not be afraid. I have power over death itself. He also raised Lazarus for those who are around him, the Jews who didn't believe, who, who knew Martha and Mary, to bring them to the faith that Martha and Mary already had. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. We hear that passage at the end. Why was he doing it? To bring a deeper faith. I know so many times people have their faith shaken when someone close to them dies. Anybody who's lived a long enough life has had somebody die in your life that you've said, why in the world would God let someone so good die so young? I don't think there's anybody who's lived a reasonable link life that has not had that experience at least sometime. You said, why would God let someone so good die so young? Part of it is we're wanting to have that miracle where God would have protected this person from death. But it's important for us sometimes to stop and ask, for whose sake? For whose sake would we want that person to have lived a longer life? If they've lived a long, if they've lived a long enough life that they're known for being a good person, that they're known for their faith in Jesus Christ, that we know and have confidence in their salvation, we really shouldn't pray for a longer life for them. We should rejoice that they've gone to their reward. But it's hard to feel that in the moment. As Christians, we like to think of ourselves as people of the resurrection. We focus on, we proclaim that the dead will rise. But many times we carry a heavy heart because we don't take that into the other aspects of our grieving, of being able to say, I really do believe the dead will rise. And if I believe that, a long life or a short life isn't the important part. Whether I live a long time, the longer we live, I like to think of it as just God saying it's taking you longer to figure it out. Which means I'm going to be probably about 150 before I pass away. I got a long way to go. Those who live a shorter life and are known to be good have been known to give their life to God. We should rejoice in that. How much suffering did they avoid? How much suffering is Lazarus going to have to endure having died once and having to go through it again? How much joy do they get to enjoy already? Those who've gone before us. Being people the resurrection is not simply a matter of, yeah, eventually I'm going to get there. That's all of our hope. But a huge part of it is taking hope in this moment that those people who've passed away in our life, who've been faithful, truly are meeting their reward. It's not wrong to pray for our own desires. It's not wrong to pray that somebody live longer 
because I'm not ready to let them go. It's okay to pray that a miracle happened to strengthen your own faith. But it's sometimes important when God doesn't answer our prayers that we realize that I'm not the only one he's looking after. And above all, God does desire what's best for us. From reading this gospel passage so many times, I have no doubts that Lazarus would have, would have gone to heaven had he died then and stayed dead. But Jesus knew he'll be fine with a few more years and a few more sufferings. And so he gave a miracle that deepened the faith of many people. When God grants us miracles, praise God for his power. When God doesn't grant us miracles, praise God for his wisdom, for he knows what's best for us even more than we do.